What is up, everybody? Peaceful here, and I'm here with another deck guide for you. So I was playing in a tournament this weekend, and I was looking for a deck that was a little bit off meta, but had the tools that I wanted uh, to be able to kind of react to what my opponent was doing, because in an open deck list format, that is a really useful tool to have. And I was kind of messing around with this deck on ladder, and I was actually quite surprised by how well this deck performed. And that is a version of what I like to call Sarah Hawk. That um, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I've been a proponent of this deck back in the back when uh, Darkhawk was a little bit more powerful, back when Rockslide was still a four cost, and I've just really found this deck to have all the tools that I really wanted in order to be a potent force in the meta game, and made some interesting choices that I think you'll uh, that a lot of you will find to be pretty pretty cool. So before we go any further, just remember if you are new to the channel, if you've been watching for a while but haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Uh, hit that like button, comment down below what you think of the deck, what things you would change, what you like, what you don't like. All of these things just really help me grow as a as a content creator. And I'm still, you know, one of the smaller content creators out there for Marvel Snap. And I'd love to uh, to grow and be able to continue doing this and be able to do it more. Uh, I would really appreciate you all support, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the deck. So this is the list that I had come up with and you'll notice some interesting choices here. This is a, a dark Hawk list. It has the, the rock package, but not black widow. Uh, we've got invisible woman. We've got enchantress. We've got Shang. We've got shadow King. And then you've got obviously iron lad and Sarah to top it off. And there's a lot of different reasons for a lot of these choices. And I wanted to go ahead and go through them and sort of explain to you why I came to the conclusion I did with the cards that I did. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we go into too much of that, let's kind of go over the game plan. Obviously, Zabu and Sarah are the key cards here. You, uh, you have a lot of different tools for reacting to what your opponent's doing, but to really keep up on tempo, you need your cost reducer. So if you, you have a hand that doesn't have either of the cost reducers, that's usually not a hand you're going to stay for if your opponent snaps. This is a standard Sarah control style list, so you definitely want to be throwing Pryo if you uh if you have your reactive tools in hand and you have sarah that is definitely the way to play this deck try and stack maybe one lane a good strategy is invisible woman that's one of the reasons she's in here uh the other one is if you're missing your cost reducer she's the only thing that really gives you a chance going into the late game but that is she's a really nice way to where you can use your energy not waste your turns but also not put power that shows up on the board just yet so generally since we're talking about Invisible Woman, my recommendation is to play her mid if you're if they if your opponent hasn't played much to the board to give you a real clue or incentive as to where you should go. Uh, another really great place to play her is anywhere you see your opponent lay down a collector or something like that. That's a really good spot to put her because then you can hide a Shadow King back there. Uh, generally, you do not want to have Pryo going into the last turn. All right, so you set up an explosive turn six where you can put down you know like a Miss Marvel plus a Dark Hawk plus a Shadow King. Uh, these are the kind of turns that are possible when you have Zabu and Sarah in play. You just get to do so much more than your opponent. And even if you're very far behind on board, you can come all the way back and win. Just remember, a real, the scariest card for this deck is Eliath. One of the things that I got to get away with is playing a deck like this in a tournament because I knew if my opponent had Eliath, I just wouldn't bring this one. So if they had decks that were running Eliath, I would just bring the other deck that I had chosen. But I ended up not seeing a lot of Eliath on ladder. The, the change to Eliath to make it only hit unrevealed cards, while worse for this deck because of Invisible Woman specifically, it has made Eliath a lot worse overall, so a lot less people are playing it. So I didn't see a whole lot of that. But that is something you need to be thinking about. If your opponent snaps you early after seeing an Invisible Woman, generally they have Eliath and know that they've got that lane locked up in the, in the long term. So be aware of that either leave or just play in a way that you don't just lose to a Lyoth in your invisible woman lane make sure you're winning those other two lanes as well so something to keep in mind something to think about but that's really it you're gonna you're gonna get your cost reducers down early try not to put too much power you generally don't want to play miss marvel and dark hawk on curve unless you just have no other choice uh, you know generally playing them is better than skipping a turn but if you can save those and put something else down that's you know proactive to the board but not gonna leave your big win conditions vulnerable to you know their your opponent's tech cards that's generally the best way to do and then you just set up for that really explosive turn six now snapping strategies for this deck are very straightforward that's one of the things i really liked about it and one of the reasons i wanted to bring it because there's some very easy rules you can sort of follow first up uh if you are playing against the deck that is weak to your tech cards and you identify that early before they've really seen what you're up to snap you know, even if you don't have all the tech cards that are good against them in hand yet, you were going to draw 75% of your deck. You're going to have the cards you need most of the time. You should be snapping early. You play the percentages. Yeah, those are, that's a matchup you want to see. So like an example I can think of is something like a bounce deck and you have Invisible Woman plus Killmonger in your deck. 
that's a pretty easy game to win most of the time. So you should be snapping that early. You also have Shadow King for a lot of what they're doing. There's just so many cards in your deck that you can draw that make it a very favorable matchup, and you should definitely be playing to that. Snap before Sarah when you have it. If you have Zabu and Sarah in hand, you play Zabu on two, you're going to play Sarah on five. Don't wait till your opponent knows the Sarah's there. Don't wait till turn six to snap them. Snap them before so they're already in for two cubes. That It's really hard to get, you know, those really big cubers if you're not if you're not willing to snap it early. Because a lot of times if you snap on on six, they're just going to leave because, well, you have Sarah down. You have a, They don't know what you're going to play. They know you've got a lot of cost reduction. People get scared. Whereas if you snap early, a lot of times it's just a psychological thing. Your opponent's going to stay because they're, well, they're already in for it, right? They're already in for those two cubes or those four cubes, and they just want to try and make sure they, you know, they don't want to just leave for four cubes. That's one of those psychological things you can take advantage of, even though a lot of time it's correct. A lot of times people just don't want to. I mean, I, I struggle with that too. It's hard to leave for four when you could possibly win eight, even if you are pretty much dead to rights if they have, you know, X, Y, and Z. So take advantage of that. Make sure you snap early because you're more likely to get your opponents to stay in that situation. All right. The last thing I want to talk about is think, make sure you're thinking about common tech cards. So if there's a deck like Loki, for example, that often runs Rogue or, you know, a deck that uh, there's decks out there right now running uh, Cosmo, like Surfer. If those are common tech cards you've seen from a certain deck and they snap you, that's probably a sign that they have that tech card that they think that beats you. Maybe you set down Invisible Woman and they snap. And you're like, okay, well, they probably have Rogue or they have Cosmo to shut down what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of times, you know, they might not even know what your Invisible Woman's for when you play it on two. Sometimes people think you're Hella Tribunal. That's just, you know, extra extra equity, right? Your, your opponent playing around the wrong things. You, you're, you just got to be careful, though. So if they, you know, Rogue on Invisible Woman's not the end of the world, but there are things like Cosmo that can really wreck you. Enchantress is pretty bad for you. If Say it's a game where you have to play Miss Marvel early or something like that. Enchantress, Rogue, those things are really bad for you. So keep all these things in mind. And if your opponent snaps you and like what's a pretty obvious counter tech situation, you just got to leave and that's okay. Make sure you are thinking about the cards that it is likely your opponent has. Because this deck is, I've gotten more eight cubers with this deck than I have in an, with any other deck in a long time. And it, it's part of what helped me really climb. But you do have to be very, very careful on the games you choose to play because your your margin for error with this deck is not very large. Last couple of things I wanted to talk about are some of the choices I made. I know because these are probably the ones that people are looking at and going, really? Like, why why are you playing these over the other options? And the big one I know I'm going to get questions about is why black why no Black Widow? This was really a, a metagame choice for what I expected to see in the tournament that ended up not really painting out the way I thought. But I, Black Widow is very good into like Loki and things like that. But with our game plan, we really wanted to... I, I was going to have to cut an answer, basically. I was going to have to cut one of my tech cards, and there were none of my tech cards that I was willing to cut because of what I wanted to have the answers for all the very different things in the metagame. Now, if you're more willing to go down on, you know, maybe a Killmonger, if you're willing to cut like an Enchantress, something like that to just have less answers, then yeah, totally. You can you can fit Black Widow in here. It just It is a play that doesn't really fit with your game plan, right? Our game plan is more about getting the cost reduction, being able to react to what our opponent does, and, you know, the rocks are a decent enough disruption a lot of the time with Korg and Rock Slide. You don't need to worry so much about the Black Widow. And we're not bouncing it or anything, so we don't get that extra value from it. So I didn't really find that I missed it. The only place that I really felt awful not having it was in the Darkhawk mirrors where, you know, Darkhawk bounce or even just standard, you know, Darkhawk not running Sarah. That felt really bad to get Black Widowed and be behind and their, their Darkhawks were always bigger in that case and things like that. But... Overall, I didn't really miss it. I did this deck performed really well, just fine without it. So if you want to run Black Widow, uh, be my guest. Uh, good luck deciding what to cut. It's really metagame dependent, but it needs to be one of the tech cards because you can't afford to cut any of the the Darkhawk package, and you can't afford to cut Miss Marvel or anything like that. So if you want to run Black Widow in your Darkhawk deck, just run a different Darkhawk deck. Don't run the Sarah version. That's my recommendation. Absorbing Man uh, versus Iron Lad was the other question I knew I'd probably get at least a couple times. It's really just up to you. I started out, and I, I think you'll probably see a couple games in this video on the gameplay side where I had Absorbing Man still, because I started with Absorbing Man over Iron Lad. And I just felt it was really awkward to get Absorbing Man a lot of times. Like there was, a, I think the, one of the games you'll see is I got actually got a turn six Absorbing uh, Shang-Chi into Absorbing Man to win a game against a, a Lockjaw deck. That was kind of sweet. But overall, it was just really awkward. It didn't pan out the way I hoped as much as as much as I expected it to. And it was just really like Iron Lad, you kind of need like the, the biggest issue with this deck is you don't have a ton of stats. So you can often like lose games where 
you do your thing if you don't have enough power to put on board. And that was something that I, that kind of sparked this change where Iron Light is something you can play proactively. If you uh, don't have Sarah or Zabu yet, like say turn four, you just had a very slow draw. Iron Light is the card that can get you back in it. Whereas Absorbing Man, Absorbing Man is kind of like a win more card. Whereas Iron Light is just a little bit more of a high roll potential, which you sometimes need in this deck. Like hitting a Dark Hawk, hitting a Miss Marvel, hitting any of those things is just a really good way to get you back into a game you're really far behind in. So those are the reasons I went with those choices. Now, that's really the majority of what I wanted to talk about today. If you have any other questions that you feel like I didn't cover, please let me know. I'll be happy to hit the, I'll, I always try and reply when people ask questions about uh, the, the video and stuff like that. So I'll do my best to get back to you on those if you put them in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I hope you'd love this deck. I've enjoyed it so much. It's been a, a nice change of pace. It, it's been a while since I played such a reactive deck and it felt good to be able to react to my opponent's plays and not lose when my opponent high rolled me every time. And just a just a super fun deck if you enjoy shanging your opponent's stuff and and making your opponents you know countering your opponent's plays this is a good deck to try has a lot of power has a lot of flexibility and uh i hope you enjoy it i will catch you next time thank you but i'll take it I <laughs> Okay, at least it's not discard. I was about to lose the lose my freaking mind if it was discard. Though that is also annoying. I just got to guess. Surely, chat. I gotta play around Leech, right? That's armor. Oh, we lose. Damn it. I thought they would play right. I would not think they would have played there. That sucks. Oh wait, we still won! Victory. That was a close one. I thought we were dead for sure. Balance Widow is super trolly. It's super unfun. <laughs> it's one of my least favorite things in the game right now. What is happening right now? I feel like I gotta leave if they snap, obviously. If they don't snap, then whatever. All's fair. Nice. Hold my 
my mighty hand. Yep. I am Iron Man. Chat, there's no way. Do they have Cosmo? Are we going to get Cosmoed? They have the Tribunal. Yep. You. I don't know what they thought I was hiding back there. Bye bye. Nice, nice tribunal, buddy. And all yesterday, just for the record. There was that really weird email that went out a few, like a month ago or whatever, about how streamers get better luck. I must not be on the list. It didn't used to work that way, PK. They changed it. When they changed Eliath, it now works that way. Can I draw something to play, please? Perfect. That's actually the best draw in the deck. Hmm. It's clobbering time. They're full on, man. Wow. Six. Killing this doesn't matter because it's already shrunk. <laughs> they tried and failed. Some bad luck. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you've got I'm glad chat agrees. Because I feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit. Okay. Ooh. I'll take a zero cost pig. Oh, they're gonna. I'm kind of tempted to do this.
We win this one. Yeah, I think we got him. <laughs> Victory. Look at that chat. Outplayed. It's honestly hysterical. Interesting. Ooh. Sounds very close to snappable. I just don't remember what they were playing, to be honest. I want to know what they're up to before I commit. Second time infinite, fast and easy on day three? Yeah, surfer is cracked as hell, it's true. Oh, that's right, they were playing this deck. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I imagine they're going to play here. But I'll be losing. Yep. Rock. This came after, right? They don't have a, a Black Knight thing. Remember, we're not getting the buff here. Oh, snap. This looks pretty good to me. Yep. I almost feel bad. But I don't. Feels good, man. Victory. Feels good, man. What a song. It's fine. We have a opponent snapped. Snap. Show the path to snap success. I got you, Dodongo. Go. It's James. What's up, buddy? They're gonna have like a lion. Oh, I could have Enchantress. That was probably the play. Hmm. I literally forgot Enchantress was in my hands. Hmm. Yeah, that was definitely a better play. Yeah, that would have been better. Uh -huh. Mm 
Sure. Got him. Is that a cover of the Lonely Island song? That's pretty funny if it is. 